should be going now. All right. Sorry, Spreaker. Listeners, I forgot to go live, but we're still waiting for people to gather in here on Facebook. Pastor Jamie, um, so good to have whoever is listening in on Spreaker. I know we have a few not able to pull up Facebook, but do listen to our messages at all on Spreaker. So we've got them pulled in. Uh, looks like we've accumulated. Uh, we average about that number. That's usually what I see on our, our services, our premieres and all. So looks like we got everybody here. So we're going to go ahead and get started this evening. Can everybody hear me well? I hope they can on Spreaker. I, the downside about Spreaker and Spreaker Live is I can't tell if they hear me or not. So I hope those on Spreaker can hear. No one told me I couldn't do that, my big hairy foot. So let me put that back down. And so Sister Amy's already asked you just a minute ago, and it's the, the header of this, who's ready to get back to the house of the Lord? Use those emojis right now. We've been using those through this whole uh, time apart, and so it'll be a good time to use them right now. I am ready. I am beyond ready. I am more than ready. Uh, it has been, um, it's been something else for sure. It's been uh, interesting to say the least. And I've got some stories to tell once all of this, once we do get back together for sure. Uh, but we've made it, we've made it through thus far and we're not, uh, completely there yet. We're not to that place that, uh, as it's been said by the president, by the governor and, and, uh, different ones as you can't just flip the switch. So, um, there have phases that's rolling out. Um, and so those phases have started to roll out. And so your question is, who's ready to get back to the house of the Lord? And I'm in agreement with the psalmist when it comes to this. He wrote this in Psalms 122 and 1. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, though I've been to the house of the Lord every service uh, during this time, I've been there by myself. Well, not by myself. I've had my, my cameraman, Noah, my audio man, Paul, and uh, Gracie, our singer on Wednesday night, they've all did a fantastic job and will continue to help us in, in the next few weeks in those aspects as well. And so I'm glad to say tonight that we plan to, to do just that, get back into the house of the Lord, to move forward with this returning into the house. Not your house, uh, but the church house. So uh, that that is the plan and that's the um, I know a lot of people drag you out, and here's the big announcement. That's the big announcement. Is we've got a plan to get back into uh, the church house. Um, now, according to our governor, we're entering uh, entering steps and uh, step one, phase one, he's called it. And according to the White House and CDC's uh, C's plans uh, to reopen our country, reopen our state, and uh, even our county has put out some stuff. We watched. All of those press conferences, I've watched more press conferences than I ever care to watch over the last six weeks, but we've been trying our best to keep up with that. And what I like about what the governor has set in place is he took time to meet with doctors. And that's been the whole thing with me. Uh, we want to be in accordance to mandates. We want to be in line. We don't want to be rebels and none of that kind of stuff. But for me as a pastor, my interest has been your health. Uh, with the diverse congregations that you have in churches uh, that range from uh, babies uh, all the way up into elders, it's very important that we uh, look out for the health and well-being. With the uncertainty of this COVID-19 and, and all the assert uncertainty that surrounds it, um, well, we've not seen anything like this. So that's been the precautions and that's the, uh, what was, what's been our desire and continues to be our desire is the health and well-being of our entire church family. Uh, but with that being said, we are now in a place that we can start the process of coming back and uh, reopening our doors, and uh, so to speak, getting back. But we have to uh, have a plan of action. There has to be something put in place that we have, uh, we're making sure that we're keeping everyone safe and we're looking out for the health of everyone. And uh, it's sure enough caused us to go through some strange weeks, and uh, but we've navigated through that. And now here we are to, to what we've been looking forward to is, is the getting back, the, the re, uh, uh, re-entrance, if you will, back into what we know as our traditional worship. 
Uh, like I said, we're, we can't just flip the switch. We can't just say, okay, here we go. We're, we've walked beyond coronavirus and we're stepping into the door. It's still out there. There's still cases out there. Uh, there still will be some peaks and, and valleys in it. Uh, there is a good chance, um, or slim chance, I guess you could say, that there could be a peak and a return and they could go back. They don't think that will happen, but that is uh, also a possibility. But through this, uh, I can tell you that we've had to, uh, to find new ways to do ministry, but we've done it, haven't we? We've, we've, uh, we've had to purchase some items. We've had to make some adjustments because we can't live stream. We, we have uh, not horrible internet at our location. We have zero internet, uh, and we operate off of a uh, hotspot, like uh, basically a cell phone. And, and it's uh, just a hot spot that can be able to pull up um, just for limited use. We're able to use that uh, there in the office, and it works well for Spreaker for the audio, but it just not, does not have the ability to give you a good quality uh, video for Facebook Live. So we've not been able to do that. Uh, so everybody knows the story there. We've recorded our services. We've uh, gone in and recorded them on Saturday and we posted them on Sunday and done Sunday school from here at the house and and everything we can to make that happen and and I appreciate your patience with us through that appreciate uh, those that have been serving and working with me their faithfulness to it and each of you who have continued to be faithful you've had to put your ties uh, in the mailbox you've had to figure out online giving you've had to, to run it by my house and you you've had to do whatever you could to make sure uh, that the funds continue to come in that we can operate and i can tell you march and april have been good good giving months you've been faithful to that um, i would love to say it's been 100 percent, and the truth is it has not but many of you many of you have been faithful in your giving and your stewardship and uh, that is just amazing how you've responded and you've all been amazing through this. I, I don't know everybody's feelings on it. I was not able to gauge everyone's feelings because if I was to, uh, in the beginning of this, begin to gauge, I'd get different opinions, different thoughts, different ideas. So that's the tough part of being a leader, tough part of being in a position. You, uh, you ask the questions of the experts, and then you make a decision. And one thing that I've tried to do is I made a decision from the beginning, and I've stuck with that decision until we got a clearance to be able to, to start phasing or to reopen. Um, have not made a lot of changes. We've had to make some adjustments along the way, but um, we put it in place and we've kind of stuck with it. But now we're into to the place that we're ready uh, for our re-entry. And so here, here's how that's going to work. Uh, our, uh, um, we will have our first service back. And this, this was what I've been saying over the last couple weeks. Well, first thing I was saying was Easter. That didn't work, did it? But uh, our first service back is going to be Mother's Day. Uh, Mother's Day, which is May 10th. And typically, we don't have evening service on Mother's Day or Father's Day. And uh, so that, that's going to be how it works that on Mother's Day. We will come back Mother's Day, 1030 a.m. will be our worship service. There will not be Sunday school there on campus. It'll be 1030. And uh, we'll continue that on campus, that one on-campus service a week for the month of May. What does that mean? That means we'll have Sunday morning service at 1030 every Sunday in May. That will be our on-campus service. We're not doing away with the rest of our services. We're just going to continue to do them as we have been doing them over the last several weeks. Not ideal, not what we all want. We would love just flip the switch, come back, but we have to follow the phases. We have to be cautious, and we have to do these things. We're not the only ones doing it. Uh, others are having to do it as well, and so um, we have to go by our congregation and what we have, our county, our officials, all of that stuff being considered. So um, we made the announcement, put it out there on uh, Facebook last night, sent out texts this morning. I scheduled those texts to go out uh, at 9.30 this morning. I hope that wasn't too early for anybody. I scheduled it at 9.30 because uh, I didn't want to send it out when I got up. But um, So we sent that out. Um, and from that time to now, we've been having to put this together, uh, discuss things, and make sure that we have this presented. And we still got a lot of work to do. We still got a week and a half to make sure that we have it in place, have a plan of action, uh, once again, for health and safety of everyone. So 
It's going to be one service Sunday morning at 1030 for the month of May. As of right now, prayerfully and hopefully June will be back to normal. So that's our prayer. That's our desire. But it could continue on into June. But we're going to have our Sunday morning service held at 1030 and hope to resume regular services in June. So here's how it will work for the rest of our services. I have been doing Sunday school uh, live here from the house on uh, Sunday mornings at 930. Um, It's going to be difficult for me to do that and then get to church. And once again, we do not have the capability at the church to do uh, live services there. So I will continue to do Sunday school but this is something you're going to have to write down because this is the this is the one thing that's going to be different. I'll be doing Sunday school on Saturday night, and uh, it will be available to you to come back. So if you can't watch it live on Saturday, you say, "Well, I won't be off uh, Saturday evening," or "I'm going here Saturday." Evening. That's okay. It'll be there uh, for you to get up and watch Sunday morning if you'd like before you head to church. But on Sunday nights at 6 p.m., I will be doing Sunday school just like I've been doing on, uh, did I say Sunday nights? Saturday nights at 6 p.m. I'll be doing uh, Sunday school just like I've been doing on Sunday mornings at 9.30. And that'll be for the month of May. And once again, hopefully all of this will change in June and we will get back to some uh, a new normal, I guess. And so then the next thing is, we're going to continue to live stream Sunday morning services on Spreaker. Um, so if you're not able to attend or don't feel comfortable attending uh, the Sunday morning service, just know uh, because of our limitations in Internet, it will only be on the audio version. It will only be on Spreaker like it typically is uh, for Sunday morning. Typically, we just put the message, but I will have them in the sound booth make sure that they put the whole service on Spreaker on Sunday morning. But we will also, Noah will take this. He's going to record the service and immediately following Sunday morning service, he'll do what he does, work his his deal. He's just been doing a fantastic job of it. He's going to put that together, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, that hotspot will give us enough strength to be able to upload that immediately following service, and uh, we hope to have it up um, then immediately following service. We've we've got to test that, but that's our hopes that we can get that Sunday morning service up by about one o'clock. Uh, on on Facebook. Uh, We're not making any promises there. We're going to try that, but it will be on Spreaker uh, on the audio. But Sunday, um, for those who are not comfortable, they can do to to attend in person. We understand that 100% completely. You do what you feel is best for you and your family, and we will have it. Unfortunately, um, it can only be on Spreaker because of our limitations in internet. If we had the capability of live streaming it, we would absolutely do that. But we are going to try our best to, to get that video uh, posted. Uh, during this, this time of May, we will not have children's church, but all children are welcome and encouraged to join us in the sanctuary with their families. And for the safety of our babies and, and, uh, and, and parents, the nursery will not be reopened until we resume our regular scheduled services once again, we're hoping for in June. Um, we do uh, have... Uh, uh, changing tables in both men and women's restrooms uh, there. And, and when, I'm, when I'm speaking of restrooms, we're asking everyone to try to limit their use of those as much as possible. I know that we're out in the middle of nowhere, and even if you use the restroom at the house, by the time you get there, you probably have to, to use it again. But we want to limit as, as much as possible uh, with that. It, it, it's a strange time that we're in. This is a strange things that we have to lay out. Uh, but that that is the the things that we're having to to put out. Uh, so uh, for the safety of everyone, we've got to make sure of that. So for and, and speaking of the safety for everyone attending, we've got to be in compliance with federal, state, and county mandates. And so and 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 really, you know, we say federal, state, and. And it's for the safety of you. It's for the safety of the vulnerable. And uh, we've said this from the beginning. Uh, healthy bodies, healthy uh, people can, young people can carry the virus and not even know it. And then unknowingly, that's really what struck me was when Vice President Pence said that that you can be carrying and then unknowingly pass it on to someone who has a vulnerable immune system, whether it's someone who is uh, an elder or just someone, uh, even even there's there's younger people with uh, 
uh, immune systems that are not what they should be. So um, for that, we have to have some guidelines in place. So uh, with that being said, if, if you feel like you cannot follow these guidelines and you say, I don't want to do that. I just want to come to church and, and be in church service. And, and that's all a bunch of nonsense. Everybody has different opinions. I get that. I've been pastoring long enough to know and been in ministry long enough to everybody's got an opinion about everything and whatever your opinion is that's fine you're entitled to that but as as a pastor mm-hmm. and as the mm-hmm. church uh, um, we have to set guidelines in place and we have to make sure these guidelines uh, are, 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 are put in place and are followed uh, because we do answer for those things and um, we answer to our insurance company. They, they require us to make sure any guidelines that's put in place that we have to have that. So there are things that we have to have in place and these are things that allow us to even start this process of uh, being able to, to come back and be able to do this service. So we want to make sure that we follow these guidelines. So if you say, I can't follow them or I won't follow them, we just ask you to continue to take advantage of our online services. And then when we get to regular services again, uh, you can come back and you won't have to worry about any of that whatsoever. Um, there'll, there'll still be some things that's going to stick around, linger around, uh, that we have to make sure uh, that we keep in place. Uh, but for for the most part, uh, that's that's just the way it has to be. And uh, with that being said, with these guidelines in place, if we find that that on the grand scale that we just we can't we can't make this happen, we can't make this work, and, and we're not able to follow these guidelines, unfortunately, we'll have to go back to an online form until we get the all clear. And I don't want that to happen. I believe that we can work together, uh, as as the psalmist said, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren work together in unity. So uh, help me help you, so to speak. Let's work together. I'm putting this in place not to be a taskmaster, not to uh, say, well, this is what I told them to do and they got to do. And you should know me well enough by now to know uh, that that is not my heart. My heart is for you. My heart is not against you. My desire is uh, to for all of you to be in worship service, to worship together with you. I love church as much or more than anybody. And I love for the church to be full, uh, but this is what, what we have to do. This is what we have to put in place, and uh, it's for everyone's best interest, and I've got to look out for that. So uh, some of those guidelines will be uh, that you're asked, uh, if, if you're not feeling well, if you're running a fever, um, you know you know your body. Your body's going to tell you. If you, you wake up on, on uh, Sunday morning and you're just not feeling well, and uh, just don't feel normal, um, regardless of what you think it may be. If you're uncertain of what it is, just take, just stay. Please stay home and take advantage of the online services. You don't want to take a chance of your immune system being down and uh, and collecting something and, and pulling something in. And, and also, you don't want to if you do have the corona. You don't want to pass it on to somebody else. So, uh, so we ask if you're not feeling well or if you have a fever. We're not asking you when you get up on Sunday morning, let me see if I, I got a fever before I go to church. But you know when you don't feel right. You know when you feel bad. So take precautions there. And then when we get to church, we're going to uh, have to uh, have some things in place uh, where you sit with your immediate family and then maintain a perimeter of, you know, they're saying six feet of distance from other church attenders. If you can do more than that, do more than that. We just want to err on the side of caution always. Have plenty of room. We've got plenty of room in our church to spread out. So uh, we're going to take advantage of that. This is one time uh, that we're going to take advantage of all that space instead of trying to figure out how can we jam pack it full. So uh, we will have the sanctuary ready to accommodate that. And um, also just maintain a respectful distance from others. When you're coming in and going throughout uh, through the, uh, the building, uh, coming back and forth, uh, we're going to do everything that we can to uh, make that easy on you. Because I know that we just do stuff naturally and we don't think about it, uh, and so we're we're going to work on some things and make sure we have some layouts and uh, of how we'll get in the doors and out the doors. Uh, I've got some information here about that, but next Thursday, next Thursday. Uh, at 6.30, we're going to go live again, and we're going to um, lay out uh, some procedures. Amy and I have got to look at the sanctuary and, and uh, <laughs> got to pull out the tape measure <laughs> and uh, just make sure that we have some things in place, have a plan of action, and put a plan of action in place. 
and um, some I know, there's probably somebody watching this right now saying this is a bunch of nonsense and, and and to a degree I you know I get that I can say I get that but we have to make sure that we're cautious and we're doing this I'm ready to get back to church and I'm ready for things to be uh, as they are uh, or as they should be and but I'm just ready to worship with you whether it's uh, six feet apart um, I'm ready for that. I, I need some amens and some, some voices. Hear some voices. Hear some praise and hear some all of those things. Uh, emojis are great and, and all of those, but uh, it, it's time. Somebody um, said something to me about, asked me about being ready for church or how, how we're supposed to get back into it and all of that. Another pastor was questioning me, texting me about it today. I just simply said, it's time. So it's time that we do that. And, and so when we do come together, it's... Um, I believe it was Sister Amanda shared this with me when we first started this, said, uh, greet, your, greet your neighbor with a holy smile. And so that's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to greet each other with a smile. I know that we're huggers and fist bumpers and handshakers and, and all of those things, high fives and, and, and all of those things. But uh, we're, we're going to have to refrain for that for, for a little bit longer. And uh, just a holy wave and a holy smile. Uh, uh, don't leave. The preacher didn't even shake my hand. So uh, I want to. I want to shake your hand. I want to hug your neck and all of those things. And uh, so while, while we're on that, be sure to greet one another with a smile. Refrain from the handshaking and hugging until we get the all clear. Now, you may be comfortable, but others may be uneasy with that. And uh, so what I need for my parents of younger children uh, who are used to Uncle Pastor hugging on them, holding them, and all of that. It's up to you to explain to them why I'm not going to be able to do that on the next few Sundays. And uh, I don't want to uh, them to come up to me and, and I'm not able to pick them up and break their little hearts. So please explain that uh, to them for me before we come together on Sunday because really, uh, Gracie's already asked me about uh, loving on the little one. I said, we can't yet. So uh, Gracie's got Daddy's heart for those babies. And uh that that's the tough part. That's really tough for me. And so if uh if you could help me out there, uh that would be greatly appreciated. I remember when I had my gallbladder surgery, before I went for gallbladder surgery, I had to let Gracie know when daddy gets home, you can't run up to me because she'd love to run up to me and grab me around the stomach and squeeze. I said, When I get back from surgery, you can't do that. And I had to give her instruction on how to hook me on the side because I had all the holes in my stomach. So uh, kids, kids tend to understand when we explain things to them. So uh, you may be, feel comfortable with a handshake and all that. I ain't worried about the corona. Well, somebody else may be worried about the corona, but they still want to come to church. So let's respect that. Everybody has a different viewpoint and a different opinion on it. And that's okay. That's okay. We're all uh, welcome to have our opinions on, on the things but let's consider others. Be kind to others and, and uh, consider others' feelings on it. Um, you're welcome to wear a mask if you want to. You're welcome to wear the gloves if you want to. They're not required, but if that's how you feel comfortable, uh, I mean, that makes you feel comfortable, um, we will... Uh, Gracie's new thing, she's been running around. Don't judge me. So we won't judge you. If you, need, if you feel like you need to wear a mask, you wear a mask. Uh, be kind of hard for me to wear a mask trying to preach, so I won't be... Uh, being uh, wearing one and uh, so but I will I'll probably stay stationed on the platform our musicians will have them stationed on the platform and our singers will will lay all that out we'll talk more about that next Thursday night on our procedures but um, that's how um, we'll work Sunday morning that one service and so now you can see why we're just doing one on-campus service a week for right now that, that's a lot that is entailed um, we're going to make sure that before service and after service on Sunday um, that the sanctuary is uh, sanitized and cleaned and, and all of those things. Uh, Sister Amy is uh, already reaching out to our ladies, and she'll talk more about that in a few minutes, about having a cleaning day before uh, we come for our first service. It was supposed to be today for this month, um, but um, we want to get that done here in, in uh, the near future, getting ready for that. You want to go ahead and, and talk to that right now before I continue on? I've already reached out with a couple of the team members. We have the two different um, cleaning teams, basically. Sister Gilda, I had sent you a text earlier. I don't know if you got it, to reach out to your team and um, make sure. It's basically going to be Thursday the 7th at 8 a.m. get started. 
And I know a couple of them are out of town, so I will take over any slack there, depending on how many we have, will be whether we do the whole entire campus or not. So um, we'll play it by ear. If you can just let me know who all is going, then we can kind of get our heads together as far as who's going to be where and what's going to get done. But um, yeah, we definitely need to get in there and get it cleaned up, get it sanitized and everything before we head back. So. So ladies, um, reach out to Sister Amy, let her know, or Sister Gilda, if you're on that team, however that works. I don't know how that works. I'm not in ladies' ministry, so they, they handle all that uh, for that next Thursday at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. next Thursday for cleaning uh, of the sanctuary and church. And I believe also she said that she's going to have to get some people, some volunteers, to be willing to do the uh, after-service um, sanitizing. And so she'll get with you on that as well, either... Thursday or before Probably Thursday. that. So um, that's how we'll work it for that Sunday morning service. And if you got questions, write them down. We're going to do a little question and answer deal right after this instead of going through asking questions. Uh, so if you got questions, write them down so you don't forget them and come back to us. So that's how Sunday morning will work. It'll be one service for every Sunday in May at 1030 a.m. on campus and uh we will not have nursery, we will not have children's church, and we will not have choir. We'll be doing congregational things, but we will not have choir. And uh, we'll talk about how we're going to lay out the procedure of in and out and distancing and all of that. We're, we've got to get a plan of action together for that, and we will get back on next Thursday at 6.30 and tell you about that. So now Sunday night service and Wednesday night Bible study, we will continue to have those. We will continue to do those. Uh, we will be premiering those just as we just as we have been doing over the past several weeks on on Facebook at Spreaker. Same service time, five o'clock on Sunday night, seven o'clock on Wednesday night. Uh, how that gets done to get to you is uh, is a whole behind the scenes. If you want to know about it, I can tell you about it. But for the sake of time in this video, you probably don't want to know all about it. Just know that you'll be able to pull up Facebook and Spreaker just like you have over the last several weeks. Uh, even if it is down to the final minute for me to get it on there, you'll get it. Um, and it'll be on there Sunday evenings at 5 and Wednesday evenings at 7, continuing our study on the, the minor prophets. And um, we should finish those up here uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember uh, the number. It should be close, though, of being right here in, in the month of May. So when we come back in June, we'll be going into a new series. So they will continue to be premiered on Facebook and Spreaker. That's Sunday night and Wednesday night. And remember, write this down because this is different. Sunday school is Saturday evening. What did I say? Six o'clock? Mm -hmm. Saturday evening at six o'clock. But don't worry if you can't watch live. We'd love for you to be there live. Uh, it, it's wonderful to have that interaction in Sunday school. I love that live video of, of teaching. Uh, but if you can't, it will be... Every service that we've done over these last several weeks are there on our Facebook page. So you can pull it up later uh, if you get home later or the next morning you want to get up before you uh, head to church and have a cup of coffee in the Sunday school lesson, it'll be there. So uh, that's how we'll work those services. So Sunday night service, Wednesday night sir, uh, Bible study uh, will continue to be premiered on Facebook and will be aired on Spreaker, on our on, on our audio of Spreaker, just as we have done uh, up to this point. So Saturday night, six o'clock, we'll have Sunday school. Sunday so, morning, not this one, right? Huh? It's going to start on starting the on the ninth. We will have Sunday school this Sunday Tenth. morning. Or ninth, yes. Sorry. <laughs> on the ninth, Sunday school, six o'clock. But this Sunday, it will be, this Sunday schedule is the same schedule as we've been going by through this whole pandemic, whatever you want to call it. All of that will be uh, the same this Sunday. All of this goes into place next weekend. So next weekend is when we start the schedule of Saturday night, Sunday school at 6 p.m. Um, for Mother's Day, Mother's Day only, we'll have the 1030 service with no p.m. service. Um, there will be, just like every other Mother's Day, we'll have a gift for every mother present. But um, we will not have PM service. And we usually do that so moms can spend time with their family. You probably said, I've spent enough time with these people. But uh, that's kind of the, the tradition that we've, we've had laid out. And I don't think that we'll be going um, to Palatka that Sunday like we typically do. Um, so, but we're still going to keep it that way. We'll just have that service. 
and uh, we have to do some testing and some uh, faults and everything getting ready for the rest of the month as well and so just for that the 10th will just be the one service but on the other Sundays and I would throw out the dates I guess it'd be 17th 24th 17th and 24th the other two Sundays in five total in May yeah so 17th 24th and 31st for all of those Sundays, we will um, be live or in-house, excuse me, at 1030 Sunday morning. But then um, we will premiere the evening service just like we've been doing at 5, five o'clock. And Wednesday night will be premiered at 7 o'clock. Both, all of those will be online. And uh, so we're waiting uh, to see that next, that next rollout, that next phase. Uh, as they continue to open open up the state and open up and give us more clearance, more clearance they give us, the more we take, and uh, we take advantage of those. So that's the plan. Uh, that's the plan of action. Still got some tweaking, still got some procedures and things to put out, but that's the announcement, and that is the, uh, that is the plan, and uh, <laughs> we're doing the best we can. I hope it's, I hope it's uh, okay, and I hope it works. Uh, for you and uh, we're, we're trying our best I've never been I've never pastored I've seen this several times your pastor's never pastored through a pandemic I haven't I've never been uh, pastored through anything like this before I don't know any pastor who has I guess in 1918 they did they I heard on a conference call that I was on yesterday that in 1918 when this flu pandemic came out uh, three months Three months of no services that they they had to go through and they didn't have online service they didn't have all of the uh, luxuries that we have now so here we are looking forward to it we're excited about it we're we're looking forward to uh, being there together with you um, I, I could care less if I ever see another camera again after this but uh, it, it has worked and and I have enjoyed uh, being able to minister uh, the gospel. Have I liked preaching to an empty sanctuary? Absolutely not. Um, but I have sure have felt the anointing. I feel like God has helped us. I feel like uh, some of us are maybe even growing spiritually even during this time. I, I, I really believe that. I believe God is touching. He's revealing some things to us. This year is the year of restoration. And uh, for Him to bring restoration, as we've said, that sometimes there has to be destruction before restoration. There has to be some breaking away before there can be some replacing and restoring. So who can tell what God can do? And uh, I don't uh, understand and know everything that's going on and what is happening, but I know one thing. He's in control. He's been faithful through all of it. Um, I've, I've enjoyed doing ministry in new, in new ways. Um, I just enjoy ministry. I enjoy church. I enjoy my church family. And um, if y'all didn't know it before, I hope you know now your pastor loves you and uh, cares for you. And this everything that I've done, every decision that I've made over these last several weeks and that we have made has been for your best interest. And uh, it would have been very easy for me to say, I'm not worried about any of that. We're just going to continue to have service. But if any of you would have come down with this virus, I, I would have felt responsible and uh, and so many other things it's, it just wasn't worth it when we, there is ways that we can have church and uh, we've been having service man y'all y'all have learned to use emojis that's for sure <laughs> and uh, we appreciate your involvement appreciate your interaction appreciate your giving appreciate everything everything that has gone into this um over these few weeks but uh and I'm ready to get back. And I know some of you are ready to get back to work. I mean, I've been working over these past six weeks and, and preaching and all of that. And I know you're missing your Sunday school babies or our Sunday school teachers. Our singers are ready to sing. Our musicians are ready to get up on those instruments and, and play their instruments. And the choir is ready to get back in the choir and sing. We're, we're, that's what we live for. This isn't, a, this isn't just something we do on Sunday. This is our lives because we're worshipers. And worshipers are ready to worship. And uh, we've just found new and innovative ways to worship. So we're going to open up for any questions uh, that you may have for me or Sister Amy uh, in regards to us coming back um, uh, and how this is going to work. As he said, we may not have all the answers because we still got to work on procedures as far as the lay of the land and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, we'll try to answer any questions that we have uh, that you may have. Um, how, if you have a question of where the coronavirus came from and anything like that, I don't, I can't answer any of those, but I can answer 
any questions in regards to our church and our decisions and our process of, of coming back for uh, our plan of action, our phase one, if you will. So anybody got any questions? Has there been any questions? Um, to address Sister Amy Talent and Sister Misty, you are welcome to be there Thursday at 8 o'clock to help out. Like I said, if we get enough of them, we can cover the entire campus and get it all cleaned at one time. So main thing is we just don't want a bunch of people on top of each other. And um, But I know usually Sister Gilda has four to five people just over in the sanctuary when she does it. And then we've also got the nursery and Sunday school rooms too that Sister Debbie and Sister Donna Kay, Sister Amanda and them help with. So yes, all help we can get. Um, that'd be great. You're welcome. Any other questions? We, uh, you know, one thing that I hated uh, that we just started last quarter and we got, we missed it this quarter. Um, not our quarterly meeting. We have that obviously. We're supposed to have that on the twenty sixth. And uh, I can tell you that God was good to us in March. So finances are looking good. So don't worry about that. Um, but what I missed was our ladies ministries and men's ministries meeting. Uh, meeting. We had a wonderful meeting with our men uh, last quarter. I was really looking forward to this quarter and uh, we missed that. Um, I, I just got a message while I was talking about one of my mission trips. All, uh, all of our other mission trips have been canceled. There have been some heartbreaking stuff that's going on. Our, our senior, Hayden's uh, uh, graduation has been postponed, uh, but we're going to celebrate with him. He's our senior this year. Um, so he gets all the attention. He's our only graduate this year, so he gets all the attention uh, this year. So uh, we hate that for him. We was looking forward to um, when when we found out Jamaica was not going to happen. I was going to be in Jamaica that week. I was going to miss his graduation. Then we found out Jamaica. And I was like, good, I can go to Hayden's graduation. So now that's that's not happening. They're going to postpone that. So hopefully we get to be a part of that when it does come about. Uh, so so many things that we've had to miss out on, um, but. That's the way it is. Any more questions? Sister Debbie, I'm not sure. I've got to go and check. I know we've got three or four cans of Lysol, and I know we've got some wipes. Problem is right now, finding some. So I'm hoping we should have enough to clean. At least I've got some here because um, I bought a bunch for our missions trip that got canceled. So um, we should be, that's up to you if you want to wear mask gloves. Um, they've been there working and but nobody else is really and it's been sitting dormant for so long i don't think we have to worry about it um main thing is just we're gonna have to keep the social distance as far as when we're working probably send one in to do one area when that person's done in that room go in and the other person go behind them i guess whoever sweeps and then the other person go behind a mop or wipe down or however y'all do it so that's the main thing is just not keeping people on top of each other all right. Any questions on the layout of service that I explained that? Because sometimes I start explaining stuff and I feel like I'm rambling and uh, I didn't get everything out that I needed to, to state. So is there any question? If you have, there, there's never a dumb question. The only dumb question is the question not asked. If you don't ask, you don't know because you, you, there could be stuff lost in communication, misinterpretation. Uh, so if you've got a question, please ask it. We want to make sure we answer all questions. I don't want somebody to come back later and ask somebody else um, when you had a chance to ask me personally. Um, so uh, that's happened many times. I've, I've sat in training meetings and people come up to me later asking me questions. I'm like, wasn't you sitting in the same class as I was? But they didn't ask the question there for whatever reason. And so they was hoping somebody was listening. So if you got a question, please ask it. And I want to make sure that uh, everybody is, uh, is clear on the service layout and all of that. Sister Amy, this Sunday service will be like we've been doing it. Um, he'll be live for Sunday school Sunday morning. Um, and then he's going to have the pre-recorded premieres as we've done the last couple of Sundays. So nothing's changing this Sunday, mainly because the order was through this week, even though he claims the churches weren't shut down. There was a big discrepancy and all that, but everything will be starting next Sunday. Sunday, not this Sunday. Yeah, so this Sunday will be just like we've been doing it. Uh, all of this, all of the new things will start next Saturday night at six o'clock. Will be our uh, first change of our schedule. That'll be our Sunday school, and then uh, Mother's Day service, one service on Mother's Day, and, uh, and then one online service the other Sundays in May, and everything else will be online. We will be back Wednesday night. This Wednesday night. 
uh, on online just like that, you know, like just like before. It'll be premiered on Wednesday night. So this Sunday will be the same schedule we've been going by for the last uh, few weeks. Anyone else? And yeah, Sister Amanda, I'll let you know. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to get to the church hopefully before this weekend because I plan on trying to go out and get a couple of things that we need here around the house that I'm running low on that I can't order online anywhere. So I will definitely let you know before Wednesday. Uh, Sister Missy made a good point. Um, yes, we are looking at altar call. Um, basically, it's going to be altar call at your, I mean, make an altar at your seat because of the, like you said, the social distancing. We are aware of that. And like I said, next week, or he said, next week we'll go Thursday evening um, again, 630. We, like I said, we've got to measure out some things as far as where six feet to see which rows we have to block off and all that and where, how far wide the pews and stuff like that are as far as to keep in the distance so we will definitely be getting back with y'all next week and give you a little bit of a heads up before you walk in the doors so you're not going into it blind and you all know me if i preach i'm giving an altar call but um over these next few weeks it will not be a call to um to the furniture if you will to the altars up front to the steps uh, altar is a meeting place with god and uh, that, that altar will be whether you choose to turn around and pray in your seat, stand with your hands raised. Um, unfortunately, the way that we'll have to lay it is out is you'll, you'll have to stay, you know, stay in place. Uh, basically, um, just like if you was watching from home, uh, it's kind of, really it's going to be kind of like an assigned area that you have to, to stay in. It's weird, I know, absolutely. But uh, we'll get through this. We'll navigate through this. If this is what it takes to have uh, church, if uh, they told me the only way you can have church is if you uh, preach your sermon standing on your head, I'd try it <laughs> because uh, yeah, it's, it's time. It's, uh, it's time for us to do, to, to do that. And um, I know there's been a lot of questions and this church has done it this way and that one's done it this way. But as I said before, I, I put a plan together, a plan of action together at the beginning, which was difficult enough. And I just stuck with that through the whole, whole time frame until we got to this phase and thank goodness we finally made it to this phase that's what i was looking for because uh, it's been stressful i'll tell you it, it for not just for me but for all of us it's been aggravating frustrating uh so many uh questions and uh our state overseer put it best it's a fluid situation i mean it's ever changing and so with all that that's ever changing i tried to just put something in place and not have a lot of change in that and if that hasn't worked for anybody, I do apologize, but uh, I've, I've done what I felt was best as, uh, as the pastor and leader, and I feel like I'm doing what I feel is best for us to do here, and just bear mm -hmm. with me, and uh, we'll get back to, to our regular schedule here real soon, I promise. Yes, Sister Patsy, at least we can go back to church, right? Um, Sister Debbie, yeah, we're going to have to do it as a, um, basically how they kind of do it for funerals, like this row goes, this row goes that type of deal. Like I said, we've got to um, lay all that out, lay it all out, see what, how the seating is even going to set up because there's a couple of people we can't move like brother Scott. We can't move him because of how he has to sit with his wheelchair. So that side will be starting at the back and going forward as far as measuring everything out. And then um, same kind of on the other sides too. So like I said, we just have to get over there, get it mapped all out and figure out what we can and can't do. And, like you said, it'll be an interval dismissals and stuff like that. And that's why we plan to come back again, not because we just love being in front of a camera, but that's why we plan to come back again next Thursday night at 630 to let you know all of these procedures will be closer to the day. Because if we tell you something, even if we had it together and we told you tonight, there's a good chance by uh, a week and a half away, you're like, what did they say? And so we want to make sure it's fresh in, in your minds and, and we have a plan of action and uh, just not just throwing something out there and, and uh, just whatever. Um, we just, we have to lay it out. And uh, so we'll do that. We'll get that all together and we'll explain all those procedures uh, and, and what we've seen and what we've measured. Uh, since we've come to this decision, we've not, not had a chance to get to uh, the church. And we know it's big, but uh, as far as the lay of the land and and how we spread some things. We got some ideas of how we're going to do it. We just have to see if those ideas are going to work when we get to the physical location and begin to uh, 
to lay it out and, and make a plan. And it's all it's all for for the purpose of safety and health. So it may not mean anything to you, but it could mean something to the one that that usually sits next to you in church. So and that's fine. Either way, it's fine. Um, we all uh, are entitled to that. But um, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I'm ready to get back to church. I, said, I was glad when they said unto me, "Let us go to the house of the Lord." When um, when I look for any any window of opportunity for us to, to start this process. Man, I was excited uh, to do this. And I'm really excited that it's, it's fallen on Mother's Day. Um, I really enjoyed preaching um, and uh, Easter and I enjoyed our Easter services and all of that. But uh, I haven't begun to put it together, but Lord has just placed something on my heart for Mother's Day. And that hadn't happened very often over the last uh, 12, 13 years because of the tragic death of my mom. So I usually avoid Mother's Day uh, preaching, but uh, this year I'm ready and I'm excited to come back and honor our moms. And uh, we have some great moms in our church. And uh, so we're gonna honor you and uh, what a wonderful time it is for us to come back and do that. Mm, I'm a softy, sorry. So any more questions? And just keep in mind, too, with the way we're going to have to lay out certain things, there could be a possibility that you're not going to be able to sit in your normal seat. Um, so please just work with us, and we're going to do the best we can do to get through this, and we shall prosper through it. Anything else? That's all I have. If, if Any there's other no questions? more questions. Uh, and if you come up, if you think of something later, text me. Text me, send me a Facebook uh, messenger, um, call me, however you want to reach out. Those listening on Spreaker, you've not been able to ask your questions. So if you have questions, please text me or call me, and uh, we'll be sure to answer those questions. And uh, I think that's I think that's about it. Um, appreciate our cameraman tonight, Noah, taking care of, of that, getting that set up for us, and uh, <laughs> appreciate everybody getting on. Uh, on a Thursday evening, it is Thursday evening, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. On a Thursday evening and spending your time with us, um, we enjoyed our service last night. Are we going to continue with what we've been doing right now for that sound booth? Because they've already been in contact for the most part. Noah, Noah. Oh. Because he's doing it on that. Yeah, I agree, Sister Amy. You need to be six foot for Brother Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'd stay six foot from Paul anyway. <laughs> I would just, we'll probably continue it right now with um, Noah because we're using a different setup for the recordings. And um, so just for now, he's already been kind of in close proximity with Brother Paul doing all these things with him um with pastor and all that for yeah because what i was also what i was saying earlier for our sunday night premieres a lot of behind the background um we're gonna what that is entailing to, to help add to that is immediately following service we're going to try to upload morning service and then we're going to go straight into p.m service after so everybody leaves after so. everyone leaves we'll be staying there to do the p.m service to get it up um and online by five o'clock so fun fun sister man agree <laughs> yeah so paul if you're watching if he's not sister man to tell him that uh that's going to change a little he's going to stay around sunday after church and do another service but he gets his saturdays back so yeah that's one good thing so any other questions uh sister debbie sister mary stone couldn't get in um she can always go back and watch it or listen to it later or she can get on Facebook. Yeah, it's archived on, on Spreaker. Um, I think it's in, I think I put it under church memories because this is going to be a memory for sure. Yeah. So it's it's there. It's going to be, it, it'll be archived on Spreaker or if she has any questions, just tell her to call me. Anything else? He's aware and willing to do anything you need him to do. I know. I appreciate that. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, if there's no other questions, we're going to um, go ahead and close this out. And uh, thank you once again for taking time. And being patient. Being patient through this whole process and taking time this evening uh, to come together on a Thursday night and um, listen to us in this plan of action. And uh, we're looking forward to it, looking forward to being back together. So this weekend, we'll continue as we've been doing. Uh, the next weekend's the big weekend, not just Mother's Day. That's big enough as it is, but uh, we're going to be heading back to the Lord's house. So uh, looking forward to that and excited about that. So I'm going to close out this time together in prayer. And um, just once again, thank you for uh, for watching tonight. And if, like I said, if any questions you come up with later, please text me, call me, uh, send us a message any way you need to get one to us, and we'll do our best to to answer those questions, field those questions. Father, we're grateful tonight for the church, for the body of Christ, and all that it takes to make up the body of Christ. We've gone through some uncertain times here lately, but it hasn't shaken the church. It's been We've had to, to make adjustments, and we've had to do things differently, but we've continued to preach your word, we've continued to apply your word, we've continued to teach your word, and we've continued to receive your word in every area of our lives. Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness to us, and we thank you for the faithfulness of the Middleburg family. And we just pray, Father God, blessings on each home that is represented tonight, God. Every, every family, every home that's watching and listening in this evening, we pray a blessing over them and ask you, God, to just bless them and touch them and help them to, to be blessed and in good health and, and prosper as their souls prosper, that they will long to walk in accordance to your will and your way. And as they do that, Lord God, that you'll just continue to pour out in abundance upon their lives. Pray, God, keep your hand upon us until we come back together again and meet together in that worship service on May 10th. We're looking so forward to that time to celebrate our moms, but most of all, to celebrate together the return to the house of the Lord. The King of kings and the Lord of lords will be glorified in that setting. And Lord, in each of these services leading up to that, we're going to give you glory and we're going to do our best to disciple make disciples, and be a witness to each one. Touch us and help us and give us, give us strength for the days to come. And touch all of those who have been affected by this situation, this pandemic, and all of those that continue to suffer from it. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. We'll uh, set Sunday morning, 930. Will be the next time we'll be. That'll be live. Uh, so we'll be live here Sunday morning at 930 for Sunday school. And 1030 worship service. Man, I'm looking forward to preaching Sunday morning. Be with us, and uh, we'll see you. You'll see it, me then, and uh, I'll see y'all next week. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. <laughs>